Hello friends, myself H S Ahmed, Department of Physics, St. Francis de Sales College Seminary Hills, Nagpur. Today we are going to see Hartley oscillator. An oscillator is a electronic device which produces the periodically varying output voltage even if there is no input present at its input. An oscillator is a self sustaining device, it generates the periodically varying output or the sinusoidal output even if we do not give any input at its input terminals. So, it produces the sinusoidal output by itself even if we are not giving anything to it, it is going to produce the output voltage. So, this is a simple circuit of the shunt fed Hartley oscillator. This shunt oscillator, uh, shunt fed Hartley oscillator consists of two important components. One is this tank circuit, which is nothing but simple combination of the L and C. This coil L1 and L2 are designed in such a way that they are tapped at its center. They can be two separate coils or a single coil can be taken and can be tapped at its center. And in parallel to this L1 and L2, a capacitor is connected. One end of this tank circuit is connected at the output of the amplifier and another one is connected to the input of the same amplifier. This is dotted uh, compartment, uh, this dotted circuit, uh, whatever is enclosed in this dotted line is nothing but the simple CE mode transistor amplifier. Now, what is the purpose of this? This tank circuit produces the oscillations and also ensures the 1 degree phase difference, right it introduces 1 degree phase difference and this CE mode transistor amplifier also introduces the 1 degree phase. So, that the output which is again paid to the input of this one that is input uh, whatever is the output and whatever we are giving to the input to this amplifier they are in the same phase. right? So, the two necessary condition for production of a oscillation in an oscillatory circuit is nothing but the loop gain beta into A must be 1 and second one is the condition of the positive feedback. So, these two are achieved by this shunt fed Hartley oscillator. So, let me explain to you what are the different functions of this the, uh, components in this circuit. This L1 and L2 are designed in such a way that this end, the one end of this coil L2 is exactly 180 degree apart than this second end of this coil L1. So, this end and this end they are 1 degree. So, this tank circuit introduces a phase difference of 180 degree by its design. This variable capacitor here is for varying the frequency of this oscillator circuit. Sometimes you may need to change the frequency of oscillation of this circuit and therefore, a variable capacitor is connected. By changing the value of this C, the frequency of this oscillator circuit can be changed. Now, in this circuit R1, R2, they are the biasing resistances, R is the stabilization resistance, C is the bypass capacitor. This C C 2 is the input capacitor to this amplifier circuit and C C 1 is the output capacitor, which is coupling output of this oscillator circuit to the output device. A radio frequency choke coil is connected to the collector of this amplifier. This is essential here, the reason is when the circuit is operating, it is going to generate a very high frequency oscillations in the circuit. Now, these high frequency oscillations produced by this oscillator circuit should not interfere with the power supply, which is constant power supply and therefore, a radio frequency choke coil, which will offer a very high reactance for the 
time varying component or the high frequency components in the circuit. So, they will not be able to enter into this power supply otherwise the power supply voltage will change. So, that is to avoid that a radio frequency chip coil is connected here. Now, the moment we switch on this circuit, this circuit starts producing these oscillations, sinusoidal oscillations are produced at the output of this circuit. Now, how it happens? From where these oscillations are generated? So, these oscillations are generated, the moment we switch on the circuit, there are various resistances uh, present in this circuit. So, electrons will rush through these resistances producing white noise, a lot of frequencies will be generated across these number of components in this uh, resistances through uh, across this transistor etcetera. Out of this one of the frequency which is equal to the resonant frequency of this tank circuit is favored and it will be amplified by this amplifier circuit, rest will be rejected. This combination of L and C in this tank circuit provides the discharge of this charge capacitor through L and again uh, whatever will be the energy across this L again will be charge this capacitor. So, in oscillatory current will be passing in this circuit L and C back and forth and that will be only favored the resonant frequency of this tank circuit. Now, that component is again amplified by this amplifier circuit and that is available at its output terminal. So, feedback fraction is V f upon V o, V f is nothing but the output voltage here, output voltage across this L 2. We can see here this is connected to the output terminal, one end is connected to the output terminal and second one is grounded. So, this much is the output voltage, right. So, feedback fraction beta is nothing but the whatever is the voltage feedback to the input of this amplifier and whatever is the output voltage. So, feedback voltage divided by output voltage, nothing but the feedback fraction. So, voltage across this L 1 is feedback to the transistor circuit. So, this is voltage across L 1 is nothing but the feedback voltage and voltage across L 2 is nothing but the output voltage. So, beta is equal to is V f upon V o. Now, beta can be written as I x L 2 that is current flowing through that coils and whatever is the reactance of this coil corresponding coils. So, I can write I x L 2 upon I x L 1, I I will get cancelled, x L 2 can be written as <coughs> omega L 2 and x L 1 can be written as omega L 1, omega omega again will get cancelled. So, beta is equal to L 2 over L 1, this, is, this much is the feedback fraction for that tank circuit. Now, condition for the sustained oscillation is this much is the uh, attenuation we can say. So, this has to be compensated in order to generate the oscillation into the circuit. So, uh, condition for sustained oscillation is A is equal to 1 over beta. So, that is equal to L 1 over L 2. So, a Hartley oscillator is a sinusoidal oscillator for production of the frequencies in the range 100 to 300 kilohertz. The I have explained the function of all these. Now, these are the resonant frequency of the oscillation omega r is equal to 1 over square root L 1 plus L 2 plus 2 m times c resonant frequency is uh, linear resonant frequency can be written as omega r divided by 2 pi. So, we can substitute this value f r is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root L t c. So, L t is equal to L 1 plus L 2 plus 2 m. These are the advantage of Hartley oscillator. So, one advantage is that in place of two separate coils, a single coil with tapping can be used and again the frequency of oscillation can easily be varied by means of a variable capacitor. So, the, these are the advantage. Again, there are certain drawbacks associated with this Hartley oscillator circuit. One is poor frequency stability, 
so frequency stability is not good and second not suitable for low frequency below 100 kilohertz so if we want to uh, generate low frequencies through this circuit then the value of l required will be very large and the circuit will become very bulky again copper is very costly so circuit will also become costly and therefore the it is not suitable for the low frequency so there are various uses of these oscillator circuits what are these uses so they are used in communications they are used for production of the carrier frequencies then they are also used in computer peripherals counters timers calculators in phase lock loops digital multimeters oscilloscopes for test then uh, various other applications are there so there are these are short problems uh, in hartley oscillator the value of the capacitor in the tuned circuit is 500 pf and the two sections of the coil how inductance is 38 micro henry and 12 micro henry find the frequency of oscillation and the feedback fraction so the values are given here the frequency of oscillation in case of Hartley oscillator is given by fr is equal to 1 upon 2 pi square root l1 plus l2 plus 2m times c here there is no coupling between the l1 and l2 and therefore uh, it is not given actually coupling so, uh, we can consider m is equal to 0 so that our formula becomes this one and we can substitute the value of all the components and if I substitute the value of all the components the resonant frequency or the oscillation frequency of the circuit becomes this much 1 megahertz. Now, feedback uh, fraction beta is equal to L2 over L1 both the values are given if we substitute the value then beta comes out to be this much. Second example. In Hartley oscillator, if L1 is equal to 0.1, L2 is equal to 10 micro Henry, and the mutual inductance between the two coils is 20 micro Henry, calculate the value of the capacitance C of the oscillatory circuit to obtain a frequency of 4110 kilohertz, and also find the condition for the sustained oscillation. So these are the values given. Again, resonant frequency formula is this one. Now we want to find C. C is coming in the square root of this. Uh, uh, formula so we need it outside so we can square it and uh, then c can be sent to this side fr square can be sent to the right hand side so that formula becomes this much we can substitute the values of all the components and if we substitute and uh, calculate so this comes out to be 11.54 pf the condition for sustained oscillation is a is equal to 1 over beta so inverse of beta actually so that is inverse of 1 upon L2 over uh, L2 over L1. So, that is L1 upon L2. So, if we substitute the value then A comes out to be minimum, minimum value of this A must be at least 10. So, these are few differences which I have used in preparation of this lecture. Thank you.